regardless of where you are, conducting due diligence and purchasing a property go together like a hand in a glove. You wouldn't consider buying a property without first conducting a whole range of inquiries. But what I've really come to appreciate is that we are creatures of habit and we are shaped by the environment in which we have spent the most time in. The way that we would conduct our due diligence in one place can be very different to another place and indeed situations like Paraguay and Nicaragua and other places where we've been, you really need to have a sharpened sense of awareness about certain things that you wouldn't need to perhaps be so cognizant of in other places like New Zealand or Australia, the US and other Western countries. It's not about being a Pollyanna or thinking that everything can go wrong. Regardless of where you are, you've got to do your checks and balances and investment's a risk. But at the end of the day, you can buy a good property, check the boxes and have a happy life. But the important thing is just to do those checks and to be satisfied that you've considered all of the things that you could have reasonably foreseen before handing over the money. And that's what this video is about. I wanted to add as part of our Property in Paraguay playlist, a series of videos relating to the issue of due diligence and the list that we have compiled in terms of things that we believe are important for us to consider. This list is continuously being updated. Even in the last few days, I've thought of one or two extra things that we need to check when we're looking at properties. And it's totally subjective. What we're concerned about might not be what others are, but I think there are some commonalities and things that we probably all need to just have in mind when we're looking at property. And a lot of these will be fairly obvious, but you only need one of these things to catch you out and you hand over the money and you would have probably wish that you may have had that on your list and considered it a bit more. So here it is for what it's worth. These are just some of the things that I consider important to us when we're conducting our due diligence on looking for property here in Paraguay. I love this area. I often come here and you've probably seen on previous videos that I tend to come and do a bit of filming here because it's one of the most peaceful and beautiful areas anywhere around the place where we're staying at the moment. But if you weren't aware, you could actually be mistaken for not knowing that this particular area is actually a significant and intensive property development in motion. Virtually all of the land that you see in this pan is either for sale or has been sold. And at some stage, th this development will get a gallop on and it will be a hive of activity and there'll be dozens and dozens of houses being built here. So the issue of intensive development of course has an impact on your consideration about the issue of whether you should invest in a particular property. Not all lotification and intensive development is so obvious. In this case you can't miss it. You drive through a gate, there's a big sign and the property development is very clear and evident. But it's very easy to go to remote parts of Paraguay where it appears to be pristine and you may be looking at a property of several hectares and there's, there may be no indication that the surrounding area or areas nearby have been earmarked for intensive lotification. Property development lotification is a keystone issue when considering investing in property because from establishing the fact that there's going to be significant property development, there's a whole lot of other considerations that you then need to think about and that we definitely take into account are on our list of important things to consider. Lotification, intensive property development, a really important thing and probably the first thing that we think about and inquire about when we're looking at any property here in Paraguay. So we've established that we're in an area that's in the process of being subdivided, lotified. So the next consideration that I would have if I was looking to invest either in this development or anywhere around here is the issue of infrastructure. Now I'm currently walking along the main thoroughfare that goes into this development. There's various roads and little pathways that lead off this main thoroughfare and this is the only one of those that is in any way maintained. There's power lines here, but apart from that, there's no other infrastructure in place. Regardless, I know for certain that a significant portion of this development has already been sold, so it's ready and available now to be built on. And presumably at some stage, this place will get a crack on and it will be a hive of activity. 
So thinking about that, there will be scores of tradies and associated vehicles coming in and out of here every day, presumably. So how are the roads going to hold up? Apart from this road, which is semi-paved, the other roads are just dirt. So particularly if any rain hits them, they get washed out, then people start driving on them. That has significant impact on the way that that road is able to be used or even accessed. Where's the curbs and channeling? Where's the footpaths? This isn't to be all uppity about it, but there's a reason why Western civilization has worked as well as it has up until recently. It's because these things were in place. They're really important. When you've got scores and scores of houses, you've got thousands and thousands of litres of water running into the drains and onto the road. That water has to be catered for. It has to go somewhere. If it doesn't go anywhere, it just takes your roads with it. You end up with impassable roads that you can't get through in the winter and it can become an absolute nightmare. So these aren't things that are just nice to have. They're essential when you're talking about this level of intensification. I do happen to know of some people that are involved in some regards with this development. I've asked them the question, what's the plan for the infrastructure here? And the answer has been really quite opaque. My understanding is that there's been some assurances that there will be some infrastructure put in, but it doesn't sound like it's a really nailed down thing. So looking forward to when this development is fully realised, well, one way or another, they're either going to have to put that infrastructure in or bear the consequences. So you've invested in a very intensive development that has got all of the issues relating to the lack of infrastructure and the impact and burden that has on your ability to run off your own waste water, your ability to drive down the road to your piece of land. We do have some power poles here. The question I'd be asking definitely as part of the infrastructure is what capacity do they have? Now thinking about hundreds of buildings here, do they have the capacity to service all these houses? Again, it's a question that needs to be asked because if the capacity isn't here, it's going to have to get here somehow and somebody's going to have to pay for that somewhere along the line. Is it single line or three phase? These are things that you generally wouldn't have to ask in a lot of countries, but here you, you definitely do have to ask the question. But infrastructure doesn't only relate to the properties in this development, they also relate to all the other properties surrounding this development. So you could come to an area where you're looking at to buy several hectares and it would be very easy just to focus on that piece of land and if it's surrounded by a whole lot of greenery and not much else, you could easily fall into the trick of not really making inquiries about what's really going on with the surrounding land. You could assume that it's just farmland or pastoral land like the land that you're looking at. But indeed, we've looked at properties that have been in beautiful locations, absolutely idyllic, only to find that when we looked on a map, we realized that that surrounding area had been intensely lotified and was in the process of being subdivided. And in time, presumably, there'll be scores and scores of other properties on small pieces of land surrounding that investment that we're thinking about making. It's not to say that you wouldn't do it, you might be happy with that, but the important thing is that you know about it, you can take that into account because there's other things that relate to development of land that I'll talk about shortly that you further need to think about and may impact on your decision about where you buy. So we've established the area is subject to intensive lotification. We still might be interested in investing in a property either in the development or surrounding. The next consideration that I'd really be thinking about very carefully is the matter of noise and in particular the issue of music. In Paraguay they're a lovely culture, they're lovely people, they love to get together as families, socialize and party and they do it with great spirit and they're beautiful people. But one of the things that Paraguay people really love is music and particularly in these regional areas where people from the capital Asuncion will come to a place like this and buy a weekender, they call it Quintas, they'll come and that's their party time. Weekend is to socialize and party and have a good time and that's brilliant. But 
They have speakers the size of small fridges that they will often set up and they're very generous people. They like to share their music with the world. So it's really common in an area like this, imagine this development more intensely built out, for these properties to have booming Paraguay music playing on a Friday night, a Saturday night, or perhaps during the week. Now that might sound cool and you might think, well, it's nice to be amongst jovial people, and it is, but it's something to be considered because outside of the capital, there's really no firm regulations in place in regards to regulating noise. And so it's not uncommon that in a development, you'll have kinters that are playing music all night. So it might be a Friday or a Saturday night, but you can look forward to quite regularly, at least one or two nights a week, particularly when it's good weather, which in Paraguay it's a lot of the time, for you just to have doof doof, and it doesn't go to 11 or 12 o'clock at night, it can often go to six or seven in the morning. And we've had this a few times in places where we've stayed in Paraguay, and it is part of the deal to an extent, but it's certainly something that when you're investing in a property, you just want to be aware of. And if that's something that is of an issue to you, perhaps you might mitigate it by buying a big, bigger piece of property. And if you've established that there's no ability to lotify a particular side of the property, you might decide to build on, on that area. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Some people love the duft duf all night. I like my sleep, everyone's different. But regardless of what the situation is, as long as you are cognizant of, of that reality, and particularly in a development like this, once these properties are built out, the doof doof is gonna be a real factor. And the doof doof is something that can easily sneak up on you. We've been in parts of the country that have been beautiful and apparently quiet, and actually no other properties in sight. But if you visit there at certain times, there might be a property that's just over the rise or in amongst the trees over there that you don't see, that on the Friday or Saturday night, it's doof doof central until the early hours of the morning. And I guess you've just got to accept that it might be a feature of your life, but hopefully it won't be a feature that really drives you bonkers. Just something to think about, and it's definitely on our list. The next thing on our list is a particularly unwelcome neighbour, and that is infestations of mosquitoes. Here in Paraguay, there is an issue with mosquitoes in certain areas. In other areas, they're virtually non-existent. Where we're living, we hardly see a mosquito from one day to the next. We've hardly ever had a problem with them. We don't get bitten by them, it's just a non-issue. But only a short car ride away in certain areas, mosquitoes are a really significant problem. And it's no small thing because the mosquitoes here can really cause you some bother. There's various ailments that can result from being stung by mosquitoes. So it's not something to be taken lightly. And the issue of mosquitoes needs to be considered not only in respect to areas that are renowned for mosquitoes, you need to also do your due diligence about neighboring properties because it's quite common here for people to have ponds or fish ponds. Now, if they're not being circulated, if they're just stagnant, well, they can be breeding grounds for mosquitoes. So you can be in an area that's not renowned for mosquitoes, but if a neighbor has got a, a stagnant pond, well, that's something that you just need to take into account. Maybe knock on a door and see how it goes, speak to some neighbors, do whatever you have to do to just establish if this is a particular issue. We've actually visited a property a few months ago that had particularly that issue. It was in an area that you'd have no dramas with mosquitoes, but there was a big stagnant pond just nearby. And it was enough for us to go, hmm, well, how's that gonna turn out when the mozzies are really on the march? So just again, something that we put on our list, something to check. You can't be bulletproof with it because you can't be there for 365 days of the year to check how it responds all the time. But definitely, a few questions with the right people in the area will really get to the bottom of it. is this an issue in this particular area. And finally on the list for today is flooding. In the place where I once called home, buying a property in a flood prone area was probably something that you would never make the mistake of, simply because generally people didn't build in those areas. It was 
often well known that those areas flooded and even if you did go to buy a property there the council would no doubt alert you particularly if you wanted to build something that it wasn't an area that you could build anything because it's a flood prone zone well there's no such red flags in a place like Paraguay you can come here and buy anywhere and you can even buy houses that are sitting right in the basins of flood prone zones and when you come in the better months of the year there's really no indication that that's so. This is one of those situations that I think sometimes we overestimate our ability to really identify a risk. We were at a property recently, it was on a what seemed to be a quite an elevated area. It had no indication that it would be a flood prone area, but later on we were speaking to somebody who knows the area well and he was telling us that just a couple of years ago, this particular house was partially submerged by a major flood. We would never have guessed it and there was no indication looking at the surrounding area that it would be an issue. So I caution myself to not be too confident about being able to identify an issue like flooding. Don't think that just because a property seems to be well elevated that it doesn't have a risk. Now in regards to flooding, you may have called it right and looked at a particular property and established that it isn't a flood prone property so you're good to go. But the other thing that you need to consider when thinking about flooding is not only the property, but also access to the property. So I don't think it's much use to you to have a property that is above the flood line, but the roads leading to it are flood prone. So for a few months of the year, it may be difficult and sometimes even impossible to get to and from that property. That's not really ideal. So when you're thinking about flood risk, not only assess the property, but also the roads leading to and from that property. Because Paraguay has such beautiful weather, it is definitely a risk that can kind of sneak up on us and we can underestimate when it rains here, it really rains. And because there's so much water in the ground, it can very quickly add up. And before you know it, your house can be either at risk of flooding or definitely the thoroughfares leading to it can be affected. Just another thing that we definitely have on our list. So there they are, five things to think about when looking at property and doing your due diligence. We have a checklist that we regularly update and we consider whenever we're looking at a property. And I just want to emphasize that it's not about saying that there's any particular height and risks associated with buying in a place like Paraguay or indeed Nicaragua or many other places, you only need one of these particular issues to come up and sneak up on you because it's not such a risk in the place where you once called home. And it can be a really bad day, so we want to avoid that. Rest assured, if you go through the due diligence, you do your homework, you can buy a beautiful property and hopefully live happily ever after because after all, that's what it's all about. I'll be doing some follow-up videos in regards to due diligence of properties. And hey, it's only our opinion. Everybody's different, but I'd recommend that if you don't have these on your list, well, at least have something on your list because it's a big investment. So that's my two cents worth. Take care. Ciao.